Hello and welcome to What's Bubbling at Zim. I am Dr. Abstract and in this bubbling we're going to continue to look at what's new in ZimCat and we're going to check out the text editor. So that's a new class in Zim at zimjs.com. We'll press on the cat now and pop on in. We've done a bubbling on the synth. We've done a bubbling on wire. That was the last one. And here is the text editor example. So let's press that now and see what's up. In Zim and on the canvas, the canvas is one big picture, so we generally don't have selectable text. Now, this is the canvas, and hey, look, there's selectable text. But what this is is actually an overlay. This is an HTML text area sitting right here. So the text that is, is on the canvas is uh, just an image. Like it's been it gets turned into an image and it's there amongst the whole big image. This whole thing, if we right click on it and save it as an image, it would all save as an image except for this text area overlay, <laughs> which is overlaid, scaled, and positioned by Zim. I don't know if you can tell quite, but as we drag that around, sometimes it seems to shift a little bit or be a little bit uh, behind. Uh, we're doing our best there. But anyway, if we want to let the user change text, it's a little bit tricky. There's a couple ways. One, we could bring up the Zim keyboard, which brings up a software keyboard here uh, that is actually within the canvas as a component. And thanks, Frank Gloss, for, for coding that. So we've had that for a while. We can use that keyboard to change the label. Uh, that keyboard doesn't allow you to sort of select multiple things easily and, and do stuff like that. So here's an alternative, if you so desire, where you can make changes to this text right here, including like making it bold. So there's some bold. Let's change this a little bit. Hello, world. Boom. All right, so there's bold, italics, italics off. There's alignment. And now, at the moment, this text area is uh, center, uh, it's center reg, so just sitting right here in the middle. Therefore, if we align one way, it goes one way, and we align the other way, it goes the other way. But you would have to handle that with the alignment of your text area. We can also change the size of the font here, and indeed, what font we're dealing with. So these are various fonts, including Comic Sans. Ugh. All right, let's take the bold and the italic off there, and that is courier, etc. Once we're good, we do that, and our text has been changed. If we click on the text, it comes back up. So that's the idea behind the text area. Do you like our text editor? Let's go in and take a look at some, some code there. Reduce this down. Yeah, this is what it looks like. We'll just pop in quickly. We are making a new label. In ZimCat, we also introduced uh, these guys right here. So there's the variant, which is small caps. Okay, so we could start off as small caps, and the editor will detect this. So you basically tell the editor uh, which text is you know you're operating on. So here's here it is, and oh, I suppose it's when we show the so the editor's got a, a show, and we're saying please operate on that label right there. And this is the label. But coming in, we now have these properties. These used to be called um, options, font options, it was. So there was the label had a font options parameter. And that font options parameter would allow you to put in these CSS things for this stuff. In the end, we found that as soon as we made properties that match this, it sort of made more sense to split up the font options and allow these to be individual parameters in the label in the first place. As much as possible in Zim, because we have Zim Duo, we try and not have nested parameter systems. <laughs> you know, there's a couple that, that make sense. For instance, properties on animate are yet another object literal. But for the most part, we have flattened everything that we can, and now we have flattened the font options. So they've been brought as individual parameters here, just like all the others. And that, I think, has tidied things up. So that's new to Zimcat. 
as well as our editor. So if we start with these turned on, then you'll see that the editor will also start with those turned on. We have a, hey, if we're tapping on that label, then show the, the editor. We also have the editor here, and we ran a show right away. So uh, conventionally, it might, might look something like this. Let me open this up in a browser here. Just like that. Press to edit with text editor. Bonk. There it is. Now, these are already bold and italics because we had set them to be bold and italics. It looks like I didn't do, or we didn't do, the font options as a... Um, a, select, a selection here that might have actually been a good thing to provide. I didn't even know really what font options were. It turns out that that sets, uh, or not font options, uh, variant. Turns out that variant sets it to small cap. It, it Maybe there will be different CSS variants in the future, but uh, at the moment it's just uh, small caps. And as we went through the latest Zim launch, uh, we found the small caps actually to be pretty handy as a fun way to present. It just doesn't, doesn't do lowercase letters here. It just makes them smaller, but uppercase. So little, this is big, and this will be smaller, uppercase. And this is bigger, uppercase, and smaller, uppercase. That's the variant. So there you go. Anything else in here? Uh, there's a couple uh, properties and stuff that you can change. For instance, you could tell the text editor to now start working on a different label or which which label the text editor is going to operate on, that kind of thing. Of course, you can hide the text editor with the code if you want as well. Just go check out the docs behind that. And there's oh a lot of parameters or a lot of um, options here. So that's kind of neat. Uh, what can we show you? We, we can remove certain ones. So if we don't want the option list at all, I think that that will. Or if you only want bold and you don't care about italic or a line. Is this where we put the font options? Yeah, probably. Maybe we have the variant in there. I don't think so, but it'd be nice to have the variant come to think of. So we refresh here and I press. And now you see that we're missing whatever <laughs> whatever it was we were missing. If we don't want the fonts, you don't have to see the fonts. So fontless true, nope. And you can put in an array of your own fonts there. Uh, press. So now it's just this little guy here with no fonts. We can only change the size and the color. Color, you can set it to be um, only certain colors, and you'll get a specific color picker there. And if you don't want any of that, you don't, you don't need it. So if we don't want these to be true, like that, and we refresh here, boop. Then it's just, hey, what does this text say? Boop, like that. Cool, huh? So that is what's bubbling at Zim. <laughs> <laughs> Need my finger <laughs> toward that if you if you ever wondered. <laughs> uh, that's been what's bubbling at Zim. I am Doctor Abstract, this guy with the tattoo of nodism <laughs> hierarchy on his head. <laughs> Truth be told, I may not have done that for real. <laughs> I actually did it with marker on my head, and it looked like I was dividing up my brain into you know regions to be dissected. <laughs> I just couldn't go ahead with it. Uh, my wife wouldn't let me anyway. Uh, <laughs> ah, too much information. Whatever. I'm giving away all my secrets. Perhaps I do have that tattoo after all. Yes. In my mind, I do. That's why I'm holding up my fingers like that, going, mm, I'm imagining I have a tattoo on my head. So you guys have a great day or night, depending, and come join us at zimjs.com slash slack. We'd love to have you there, um, zimjs.com slash slack, and spread the news. Ciao.